it's time to move towards another loop. Now, if you remember, we have talked about three loops in programming. In fact, there are four, and maybe there are many in other languages, but the languages which I have explored, we got while loop, do while loop, for loop, and until loop. Now, in Python, just to keep it very simple, they went for two loops. One is while loop, and one is for loop. We have talked about while loop. It's time to focus on the for loop. Now, why we don't have other loops? It's because if we talk about until loop, it is, I think it's only in shell, not in other languages, which I, have, which I remember. Might be, not sure. But if you talk about do while loop, it's very similar to while loop, right? So in while loop, basically you check the condition before, then you execute the block. In do while loop, you check for the condition later. Now, both does almost the same thing with one change and you can simulate the thing which you can do in do while loop using while loop. So Python said, let's keep it simple. Let's stick to two. One is while and one is for. And we know now why, how while works. Let's see what advantage you get using for loop. So I'm going to create a new file. I don't know why I clicked on extensions. Happens. Uh, I will just make sure I name it as uh, for demo.py. And also, since I'm doing this after some time, I need to snooze this copilot. Okay, now how do we use for loop and what's the advantage? And to do that, first of all, let's use a while loop to do, do certain things and then let's try that with for loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list here and let's name this list as data. And in this list, I'm going to have some values. Let's say two, uh, let's say my name Naveen and let's say we got 4.5, some random values, I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm going for this random values, but doesn't matter, right? Things should work out. That's important. So Python, so the list and Python. So we got these values. Now I want to print these values. Of course, you can simply print them with the help of just data and this should work out, right? So if I try to say run this Python for demo.py and this is working. But what if I, what if you want to print these values one by one? And we have done that before. You can use the index number. So you can say data of zero. And then in the next line, you can say data of one. So it will print the values one by one. Here, we are just printing first value. That's why you got only one value. But what if I want to print all, but I don't want to print this multiple times. I don't want to write print statement multiple times. And we know if you want to do the same thing multiple times, you can use loops. Uh, I'm going to use a while loop here. So let's stay while and we need a counter because we have to start from the first position to the last position. So how many values we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have to start with the first value. Now I'll be using a counter, which is I, but it should start with zero because the indexing starts at zero. And then I have to end at five is because zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So even if you got six values, you have to stop at five. So I can say I less than equal to five okay and then i'll just put that in this and let's make this i one more thing we need to also make sure that you increment the value of i others otherwise it will just go into infinite loop printing the first value repeatedly and you can try it out on your machine i don't want to give that pressure to my cpu again to run infinite loop i care about my machine so let's run this and you can see it will print everything okay as simple as that so this is how loops can help you. Okay, we can do one more change here. Instead of having five is because what if your size of this list is 100? Or maybe you don't even know the length of it. It is getting passed by the user or getting filed from the internet or maybe it's coming from data database. You don't know. So in that scenario, what you can do is you can say n is equal to, once you got the data, just find the length of it. Let's make it dynamic and let's say n. So nowhere we are specifying the size of it. So in case if it is increasing in future, it will just adjust to it. And now let's run this. You will get the same output, but we got an error here. So what is the issue? It says it is going index out of bound. Oh, oh, okay. You know what happened? The length is six, right? And we should have stopped it before n. So if it is the length is six, we have to stop at five. That was the issue. Let's run this and solve. This is how you can do it with while loop. Now, what if you want to do, do the same thing with for loop? Let's see how, how do we do it. First of all, what's the drawback of while loop? See, we are initializing the value. We are finding the length here. Then we are incrementing it here. In fact, we are also checking for the condition here. So many things, right? So if I comment this part and let's try with for loop here. So we can use for, that's, that's how you do it, syntax. Now for says, okay, my job here is to work with the collections or range or like list. So it will try to go to that particular collection and say, okay, you got 10 values here or any number of values. 
I will give you the values one by one and you as a developer can do whatever you want with that value. So I will say for value, again, you can name this variable anything. This is just a variable name. And for value in data, that's the syntax which you have to use. The variable which will hold one value at a time and the data is your collection or your list or your range or whatever you have. And then you can print it on whatever you want to do. I'm just going to print the value. Okay. And that's it. Look at the number of lines here. Just two lines. And this is, uh, you can count it, more than five. So let's run this and it works. Okay. Now this is where for loop says, I'm there, don't worry. But then this will work only when you have a list of values or a collection or a range. While loop says, if whenever you want to do with certain values, maybe you want to get it from a file, uh, you want to read characters one by one, while loop works here because we have to also specify condition. There's no way you can pass a condition here. Of course, you can do that inside uh, the for loop, but not in this line. Okay, uh, that's how you use for loop. And let's see how it, it is working. So I'm going to debug this to see how it is fetching the value, how it is printing one by one. So let's do the debugging here. And let's hop over. So it is fit, fit, picking the first value, which is two. And that's the value you got. And that's what it's printing on the console. Then it goes for the next value of the data, which is Naveen. And you can see value is Naveen now. And then one by one, it will just jump to the next value. 4.5, then 8, then Talisco, then Python. And it will give you those values. Beautiful, right? Uh, one more thing you can do here is instead of having a data like this, what if you want to print 10 values from 0 to 9? In that case, you can use something called range. We have talked about range before. So we can use range here. Now what range will give you the values from 0 to 9? And then value will have one value at a time from the range. 0, 1, 2, 3. Let me remove the breakpoint. Let me stick to the PowerShell and let's run it from here. And you can see we got all the values from 0 to 9. So yeah, that's how you use for loop in Python.